On today's episode, we're attempting to see the heavy frogfish because we got news from the other day that he's been spotted in the area. However, we found something we weren't expecting. Something really awesome. Lunch is here, and I gotta say, this is the biggest portion of schnitzel I have ever seen, Sherlyn. Wow. How are you gonna finish that? I don't know, maybe later. <laughs> <laughs> this is too much. Look at the size of this thing. Yeah, my hand is big. <laughs> what? <laughs> Can I have some? Uh, yeah, Can sure. Can I have some? Okay, we made it to Thalatta Resort and that was about 30 second drive. <laughs> this is the cool thing about Darwin. There's so many places, resorts, we've been jumping around, seeing new things, new restaurants, new dive locations. Every single dive is something House new. Reefs. House reefs. And there's no one here. <laughs> there's literally been no one here. What, is it Sunday or Saturday? Monday. Monday. It's Monday. Ugh. I don't even know what day it is anymore. My name is uh, Uyin. Uyin? Yes, U-I-E-N, Uyin. What's the chances of us seeing the uh, frogfish today, Harry? Harry, uh, we will try to go some five meters. Yeah. The after, we go going, going to the slope. It's all sun and we can see some boulders. How big was the Harry? Like this size. That's good. Yeah. The main reason why we're coming to this dive location today is because of the hairy frogfish was found only four days ago. And I know we're just diving in Malata Pai, which is next door. And uh, normally we would probably do two dives there, but when we heard that the frogfish, hairy frogfish is around, probably the most difficult one to find. So that's why we came here, we even hired our second guide today. So we have two guys paying both of them and they're gonna be helping us specifically to try to find this super duper rare creatures. There's also an artificial reef there called the Tower. We visited that before and we didn't see much, but so we're hoping to check that out as well and perhaps we'll see something cool there. And also as their guide, Awin, there might be Harlequin shrimp. That's where they found them. Same area as the frogfish about four days ago. But that was last year. So that's like, that's how rare it is guys. We already crossed off so many things off my bucket list like the Pikmin seahorse and Justin hadn't seen one for two years. We're probably not going to see seahorses, harlequin or hairy, but this is one of my favorite dive sites. Yeah. And we're going to see everything else. We've got two guys today, something we don't normally do. So uh, we're doing an extra special one. And they're friends and they've dove together before so they know uh, what we want, they know what we're looking for. There's no other guests. It's just us. And just before we get into the water, we are making a strategy or how we're gonna tackle or try to find the heavy frogfish because we have two guides with us. Alex and Justin go one way and me and the other guy, we go separate ways and then we try to meet up at the same spot just so we can cover as much distance as possible. But as soon as we get into the water, like usual, we see a couple of nudibranchs, robust ghost pie fish, and then the mighty flamboyant cuttlefish. He was so cool because he's just standing there on a ledge, almost like in a lion kink, roaring into the ocean. <laughs> and if he wasn't standing there, you probably wouldn't even find him because he is so well camouflaged. And then a couple of minutes later, of course, he starts moving around, perhaps searching for food. And this was my second flamboyant and uh, it was much smaller than the previous one. But I would say it's still the same experience of finding them and filming because the colors and the morphing, pulsing, the characteristics, I freaking love them. And 
and as I'm hovering above him, take a look how he blends in with the environment. Wow! One more time, look at that! This was a pretty cool dive spot because there's a lot of different topography and here in the seagrass we noticed this uh, fish called Gunnard I believe, I think Justin said that, Gunnard. And I really like this dude because it almost looks like he has a wingspan. It's like a bird that has gills and breathes underwater. Really funky one. Then I wanted to film the scorpion fish and take a look how he walks around. It doesn't look like he has legs, but instead it looks like claws crawling his way through the bottom. And here's one of the cooler ornate ghost pipe fish. This guy is kind of transparent mixed with uh, red and white dots on him. And I believe he's going through his juvenile stages, so in the end he's gonna be or have a complete colored pattern. But as of now, he's like 50% transparent. And these funny little fishes are called gopi, I believe. They like to burrow themselves in these holes. And in the sandy slopes, we saw a couple of these fire nudies, I believe, or fire worms. Their shape is super cool, very alien-like, something we don't see on land. I love how these guys are just slithering their way in life, searching for food, and they really don't get picked off by other preys, because inside their skin and their body, they're full of uh, venomous cells, so that's why they're just able to live their life without getting attacked. And here's another one I've never seen before. So on this dive, we saw, of course, a couple of things I've never seen before. And here we got the leaf ship, one of my favorite nudibranchs to film. These guys are so freaking tiny, but I think this is my best shot of them so far. He's facing the camera, you can see his eyes, tiny little two dots in between the horns, so to speaking. And it kind of looks like a sheep, right? And at the very deep depths, I think this was around 30 meters, we saw this cryptic shrimp. Yet another one we've never seen before. Really cool guy hiding under the coral. And as we're making our way down, try to go further deeper, try to find the hairy frogfish, we just couldn't. However, we're able to see so many gorgeous critters. And these really beautiful worms, pipefishes, pufferfishes, reef fish, two awesome looking eel. Here we got the green seahorse and uh, guys if you're ever filming seahorses make sure you're not having your lights turn on maximum. So in this shot we actually have the light very far from the seahorse and the good thing about our lights we're able to manually control the brightness of the light. So in this case we turn everything to the lowest. We're aiming the light above him so not sideways because if you shoot the light on the side it's going to go directly into the seahorse eyes which can actually blind them so make sure your light is above them now we didn't find the hairy frogfish but we found a white seahorse let me show you the silver seahorse sure how rare it is but this was the most beautiful thorny white seahorse I've ever seen and on the way back up we of course stumble upon more nudies and here's a new one I've never seen before me and Justin we have two books of just identifying these nudibranchs 
So <laughs> I have to go into the book to find this dip, sorry I don't have it now. But what a awesome dive. <laughs>